<sighs> Those memories. So dark. This is Joe. So, your boy just released, and I was lucky enough to pull one copy of him. Hopefully you guys had good luck on your polls. Of course, I do have a poll video out if you're interested in viewing that. With our new addition to the game, of course, we do need to go over a just general view of the character, kind of go over talents and uh, all that good stuff, just so that we can kind of get that stuff under our belt. Before we do get started, I do want to quickly just mention that I have made a personal goal for myself to try to hit 50,000 subs before my birthday, which is April. So if uh, you guys want to help with that, that would be pretty cool. Uh, I know it's kind of cringe for me asking, but otherwise people don't know that they're not subscribed. You may not be subscribed. If you want to help with that, go ahead and hit that. Anyways, let's go ahead and hop in here. Xiao is an animo polearm user who just uh, is insanely fun to play. There is something about him that's just super, super fun. Uh, he is pretty much going to be a straight up DPS making machine. Um, there's not really a big point in using him for anything other than uh, DPS. You could, I guess, use him just as kind of like a burst kind of deal, but uh, he, he's mainly going to be like a, a hyper carry selfish kind of character, similar to how you would run uh, Razor in the fact that Razor needs to be on the field and Zhao needs to be on the field. It's just kind of how his kit seems to work right now. But with uh, with all that being said, let's go ahead and hop in here. So our normal attack is called Whirlwind Thrust, performs up to six consecutive spear strikes. Our charge attack consumes a certain amount of stamina to perform an upward thrust. And our plunging attack is just like every other polearm character where we fall from the air with style. Now this is what it does look like at level six. You guys can kind of see what we're working with here. Next, our elemental skill is called Lemnist. Oh my god pronunciation please lemniscatic wind cycling that's what we're going with Zhao plunges forward dealing animo damage to opponents in his path this can be used in mid-air and it does start with two different charges got to see how it scales here the uh level six at 354 percent this is pretty gnarly and considering it's on cooldown for 10 seconds but you have two charges is pretty freaking cool and the fact that it can be used in the air you basically can be gliding, you can hit your E, you can dash forward pretty much in the air, go right back to gliding, wait a few seconds, dash again with your elemental skill. It's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. Next, we have our elemental burst, which is called Bane of All Evil. So Zhao dons the Yaksha Mask that set gods and demons trembling millennia ago. The Yaksha Mask greatly increases his jumping ability. Basically, he gets a huge jump instead of just a little puny jump. It increases his attack AoE and attack damage and converts all attack damage into anemo based damage, which cannot be overridden by any other elemental infusion. In this state, he does continuously lose HP and this effect ends when Xiao leaves the field. This is kind of how I compare him to Razor because Razor, whenever you use his elemental burst, the wolf within, as soon as he leaves the field, it just completely negates everything that you had uh, as far as your elemental burst goes. So when you go into this elemental burst, it basically needs to be the last thing in your chain or essentially you just need to be able to use it to its full extent because if you switch off of it, you are going to forfeit the damage and basically have just wasted a bunch of energy. So as you can see, the uh, the normal damage increase does go up 77% here. At level six, the life drain is two and a half percent of your current HP per second. Duration on it is 15 seconds and cooldown is 18 seconds, which does mean that we end up having a three second lull period and energy cost is 70, which is kind of high. Honestly, it would have been nice if they would have brought it down to 60, but it's, it's no big deal. It's whatever. So the first talent that we're going to unlock from Ascension is going to be Conqueror of Evil, Tamer of Demons. While under the effects of Bane of All Evil, all damage dealt by Zhao increases by 5% and that damage increases by a further 5% for every three seconds the ability persists. The maximum damage bonus is 25%. So essentially, as soon as you activate it, you get 5%, and then for every three seconds after that, you get five more percent, which ends up meaning for the last three seconds, you should end up having a 25% damage bonus increase, which is kind of cool. Our second talent that we get from Ascension is called Dissolution Eon Heaven Fall. Using your elemental skill increases the damage of subsequent uses of your elemental skill by 15%. You see I'm dodging the name there. This effect lasts for seven seconds and has a maximum of three stacks. Gaining a new stack refreshes the effect's duration. So essentially using your elemental skill is going to make your elemental skill do 15% more damage for the next seven seconds for a maximum of three stacks. 
So you can essentially just stack a little bit of damage here, max of three stacks. And every time you gain a new stack, it does refresh the duration. So as long as you're cycling in your uh, elemental skill every seven seconds in whatever kind of skill rotation that your team is using, you should uh, be able to stack those three stacks and keep them for a little while. And for our throwaway skill, we do have Transcension, Gravity, Defire, decreases climbing stamina consumption for your party by 20%. It's not uh, stackable. Cool. So as far as the constellations go, uh, at level one, he gets an extra elemental skill charge for a total of three, which is... <laughs> Can I activate it? No. Uh, at level two, when Zhao is in the party, but not on the field, his energy recharge is increased by 25%, which is actually pretty nice. At level three, it increases your elemental skill by three levels, which is good. At level four, when his HP falls below 50%, he gains 100% defense bonus. I said this in the trailer reveal video that I kind of feel like if they went more in on the the high risk, high reward kind of thing, instead of giving him more bulk, I feel like it would, I don't know, it would make it a lot more fun for me because I like the whole high risk, high reward kind of thing. Uh, whereas this is more of like, Hey, let's, let's kind of keep him on the field for longer by giving him more bulk. Let's not let him die as fast, but I'm okay with dying. If I risked it for some insanely big number, like I'm okay with that, but that's just me. I'm not a huge fan of level four, but whatever. Uh, level five increases your elemental burst by three levels, which is fine. And at level six, when under the effects of Bane of All Evil, hitting at least two opponents with his plunging attack will immediately grant him one charge of his elemental skill. And for the next second, he may use it with ignoring its cooldown. That's actually kind of cool because that means that you could uh, just have some super nutty stuff. Oh man, you could just go all over the place. One, one of the things about Xiao is his like, his movement capabilities, he just like, like, I don't know, man. He just, shoo, like he just goes all over the place. And under his burst, man, you are jumping and slashing. Like it's, it's crazy. It's super, super nutty. All right, now, as far as the weapons go, so there's kind of like one, like I said, Xiao, the way that he plays is pretty much like a, a straight up DPS. There's not gonna be too many situations where you would want him on the team if he's not going to be like the main carry of the team. I'm sure as things develop and things kind of expand on him, there may be more options in terms of like, what you can do with him on a team and like the team setups may you know be meshed out a little bit better but for right now we're basically going to be focusing on building him as strong of a dps as we possibly can now for Xiao, whenever he released he actually came out with a uh, weapon banner for the primordial jade wing spear which is pretty much gonna be your best bet all across the board. No matter at what stage in the game you are, this, this weapon is going to be insanely good for him. Basically, it's gonna come with crit rate and not only does Xiao have crit rate for his ascension stat, you're gonna get extra crit rate from this weapon and then on hit it increases your attack by 3.2% for six seconds, max of seven stacks. And this effect can only occur once every 0.3 seconds. And while in possession of the maximum possible stacks, the damage dealt is increased by 12 more percent. So it's insane how much freaking damage this thing can do, man. It is gnarly. After that, we do need to call out Vortex Vanquisher. Now, I know some of you guys see this Staff of Homa down here. That It's actually really, really good, but because it's not released quite yet, let's we'll, we'll talk about it at a later date. Vortex Vanquisher, on the other hand, is also going to have a pretty decent set of stats for us. It's gonna have attack percent and it increases our shield strength by 20%, which is not really what we're looking for, but while we are protected by a shield, the attack effect that you normally would get is increased by 100% on this boy. So it's insane how much extra attack percent we can get off of this, which is just super nutty. We could also call out the Skyward Spine, which is another great option. It has energy recharge, which like we said for his burst, because it is 70 energy to fire, it could... It could feel a little bit like lacking if you don't have enough energy recharge on him, but Skyward Spine does help you there. It increases your crit rate by 8% and additional normal attack speed by 12%. And normal and charge attack hits on opponents have a 50% chance to trigger a vacuum blade that deals 40% of attack as damage in a small AOE. And this can occur no more than every two seconds. 
Next, we should talk about Deathmatch, which is the Battle Pass weapon. So unfortunately, nothing that we've talked about thus far is very free to play friendly, but the Deathmatch does have crit rate on it as well. It's pretty much gonna fall kind of in line with how uh, the Jade Primordial Jade Wing Spear does. If there are at least two opponents nearby, attack is increased by 16%. The defense is increased by 16% as well. If there are less than two opponents nearby, attack is increased by 24%. So very interesting how if you're fighting a bunch of mobs, then you're gonna be like pretty bulky and you're gonna get attack increase. But when you get down to the last one, it just increases all of your attack. So very, very cool. I really like the deathmatch. And I, I actually would say that the deathmatch feels like my preferred weapon just from like the numbers and stuff that has been run on it. Next, we actually need to call out the Black Cliff poll, which depending on what your situation is and how long you've been playing, you may have the Black Cliff poll just from the shop. After defeating an enemy, attack is increased by 12% for 30 seconds. And this effect has a max of three stacks and the duration of each stack is independent from one or the other. It does have crit damage on it, which is actually kind of nice because if you're already getting crit rate out of your Ascension stats, you could end up getting crit damage off of your weapon. Although I seem to kind of prefer both crit rate on my character and on my weapon. If I come to that situation like Deluke, then I really like to have crit damage in my artifacts. It just makes it a little bit more clean and cut. For me now for some more free to play options we could actually talk about the crescent pike so the crescent pike is kind of heralded as one of the like great pole arms for most free to play users i still do think that it's a very very good option here although because it does have physical percent on it it kind of sucks whenever you're using your elemental burst it's nice whenever you're just doing like your normal attack strings and stuff like that but eh, um as far as like just overall it's it's a really nice free to play weapon Weapon, probably going to be the best free-to-play weapon arguably um, prototype star glitter formerly known as prototype grudge could actually be pretty good for kind of similar reasons that skyward spine was good but I really think that it will come down to preference on which two you actually prefer both of them being completely free to play is really really good it just really depends on which one you like and unfortunately dragon spine spear I feel like is just a worse crescent pike so I we're not gonna talk too much about that one but prototype star glitter on the other hand is going to have energy recharge on it which is really nice and when you use an elemental skill it increases your normal and charge attack damage by eight percent for 12 seconds max two stacks the reason that this is actually really good is because you can use both of your elemental skill charges back to back and immediately build that up which is kind of cool so you end up getting 16 percent of your attack percent increase which is kind of nice now there are some more three star options that we could talk about like the white tassel it does have crit rate on it and it is going to increase your normal attack damage by 24 percent so it is a very interesting situation to be in um i i have one but i don't have the materials to this necessarily boost it like I think I have it at like level 40 so it's not a, in a very good spot for me to really test but I do think that it could actually be really interesting and especially if you are short on you know crescent pike or prototype star glitters already being used by someone and you don't have the materials to craft another one because let's face it none of us really do white tassel I think could hold you over until you move into something a little bit more in line with what you want to do with him uh, but yeah white tassel seems to be a really nice free to play option here as well now, as far as your artifacts go, this one's gonna actually be pretty simple in the terms of a two-piece Glad and two-piece Veridescent really seem to be like heralded as the top choice here. So a two-piece of Glad is going to increase attack by 18% and a two-piece Veridescent is going to increase your animal damage by 15%. And that really fits perfectly in line with what we're gonna be doing with Xiao. Basically, uh, increasing his attack as a DPS is perfectly fine and increasing our animal base damage is just just going to be perfect for our skill and when we go into our burst it's going to be insanely good so i think this one is probably going to be like the ultimate goal for you but if for whatever reason you don't have two pieces of each that you really want to use what you could do is go for a full piece of either or now i do think that it changes kind of how you would want to play him if you go with the full four piece of the veridescent veneer increasing your swirl damage by 60 percent means that you would typically want to have something off field that is going to be able to apply elemental uh, aura onto an enemy like uh, oz or gooba or something like that you would want to have something that can allow you to do a ton of swirl damage just 
just by having Zhao be the main character on the field. Then after that, you could just kind of play around with it and see how you like that. Uh, decreasing the elemental resistance of the element infused with Swirl is okay, but I guess like this really makes a lot of sense if you have like Zhao as like your main carry and then you have a sub DPS that is going to be applying a ton of elemental base damage. Like maybe you want to have Zhao and then you want to have Ganyu and you want to have like Zhao, Ganyu and another cryo character that's going to be able to apply off field like Kaya uh, with his elemental burst and then you're able to use the four piece of very distant veneer from Zhao to reduce their cryo base resistance and then when you switch off of Zhao into Ganyu you could do extra cryo base damage because their elemental resistance is reduced. Something like that would kind of be an interesting situ situation if you could do that. We do uh, also need to talk about the full four piece of the Gladiator's Finale because we are a pole arm user, normal attack damage by 35% is increased. I think this kind of goes against what Zhao uh, ultimately wants. I think ultimately he is going to want more animo based damage and uh, it just, I don't know. It feels like this one is something that is particular to your playstyle. If you play a lot more in the normal attack situations rather than the bursts, then this might fit right up your alley. Otherwise, I think you would want to go with a two-piece of Glad and two-piece Veridescent. And the nice thing is, is that both being both at two pieces a piece, it makes it a whole lot easier to obtain. Getting four good glad pieces is stupid hard and four good fair distant pieces is not as hard but still stupid hard like getting just two good pieces of each is at least a little bit more obtainable now of course we are going to talk about a couple of dumb things that you could do with him uh while protected by a shield you could gain 40 percent normal charge attack damage if you went with the full four piece of the root tracing belied i have seen some people actually using thunder soother in a setup with beto uh or fischl with an off field uh, electro application you could end up increasing your damage against opponents affected by electro by 35 percent uh same thing goes with lava walker if you have a pyro that can apply damage out off the field like shang ling or something like that uh then you could increase some damage there but i think those are super situational that they don't make a whole lot of sense to try to build into that's just me though Again, of course, if you do feel like you need some extra energy recharge, you could sprinkle in instead of the two-piece of Glad or two-piece Veridescent, whichever one you don't have completely farmed out yet, you could throw on a two-piece of either the Exile or the Scholar for some energy recharge. If you really, really like your elemental skill and you want it to do more damage, you could end up going with the Gambler set. Or until you get everything farmed out, you could just go with a two-piece of the Braveheart and a two-piece of the Shazorner just to get a ton of extra attack percent until you get your sets kind of situated. Now, as far as the stats go on these things, I definitely would focus on attack percent on your timepiece and then crit rate, crit damage, whichever one gets you closer to that one to two ratio on your circlet. And uh, let's come back to this for a quick second. As a main DPS, you know, pretty much the standard stuff applies. Any kind of flat attacks, attack percents, crit rate, Crypt damage percents, uh, all that good stuff is good. Energy recharge is actually not horrible here, simply because our elemental burst does actually take quite a bit of energy to fire off. And actually, elemental mastery isn't the worst stat in the world just because it's going to increase your swirl damage, which as long as you're using him on a team that allows for swirl to happen, that actually could be kind of good. Now, back to our goblet. So there's actually been a ton of math done on attack percents versus animo based percents. And these things are pretty interesting to look at. So of course, this is going to come down to exactly which weapon you have and stuff like that, because it is going to affect your attack percents and your base stats and stuff like that. But from the main gist of it, if I try to sum all of this up in one fell swoop, Animo based goblets are going to edge out attack percent goblets just slightly. You could go with either or if you're not really in the world of min maxing, but if you want to get like maximum benefit out of your Zhao, then go with the animo based percent. But if you truly aren't that worried about it, an attack percent goblet isn't going to kill you. As far as your talents go, as a main DPS, of course, we want to focus on our normal attack first, level that up because you're going to be using it the most often. Then it actually seems like it would make more sense to go with your elemental burst just because the uh, the amount of damage that you're going to get out of this thing is insane and increasing this is going to further increase this. So this kind of works in tandem with your normal attack. So it makes a lot of sense to go with this next. And then you can focus on this one. I do really, really like this one though. Um, just, I guess it really depends on your play style, but 
I would go normal attack, elemental burst, then elemental skill. Now, for my favorite part, let's go fight some stuff. What you guys want to fight? Um, I've been fighting these things because they're new. Let's go fight some of those. Now, for my team setup, <laughs> I am actually using Zhongli just because I've been messing around with his uh, his buffs since 1.3 dropped, uh, which do actually feel really nice. I Again, I don't feel like it. his buffs change the way that you build him per se, you can still build him off of attack percents or HP percents, just like we talked about in the character review. So I'm not super worried about remaking that video. Uh, Child is just there so that it makes my uh, normal attack literally a level six and gun you just because I don't go anywhere without my wife. Oh, <gasps> dude, how have I been missing these? This is the second one today that I found. All right, let's fight this big boy. All right, so these guys are super fun to actually fight. See, I just, I love how like fast he moves. Like there's just something about like just zoom, zoom, zooming across the field is just so much fun. All right, hit this burst. And then you can see we can just jump over and over and over and over. Now remember, you are gonna slowly whittle your own health down. So it is kind of, it is kind of scary sometimes in that, but it does convert everything to animal based damage, which is super, super cool. And uh, yeah. Just make sure that you have plenty of food with you wherever you go. Now, as far as what I am currently rocking on Xiao, I still, I am waiting for this battle pass rotation to allow me to get the deathmatch, but that will be the ultimate like weapon that I end up using on him simply because I'm not gonna go in on a weapon banner and stuff like that. I, I, I just, I cannot justify wasting my resources on that kind of stuff. So uh, we are currently at least a four. Um, you can see that we do have a pretty decent chunk of stats. Crit rate, crit damage is a little bit out of the one to two ratio, but not super bad. Our animal based damage is 61.6% due to our artifacts, which is kind of nice. We are rocking the Crescent Pike for now, which of course, like I said, does increase your physical based damage. Um, this is, oh, it's level 50. So the white tassel, the problem that I have with it is, oh my God, Look, look at the difference. It's 20 levels difference and more than almost half as much base attack. It's just, it doesn't feel like it's worth it to, to switch to that. We'll, we'll do some, we'll do some quick tests there. I am rocking the two piece, fair descent, two piece, uh, gladiator set. Uh, and then, yeah, you guys saw level six on everything. So let's, uh, let's go fight this Fatui agent really quick. And I'm going to, I'm going to fight him and then stop relatively close like mid battle so you guys can see fifteen forty nine on the charge attack all right let's uh let's head back up here so we should see a, a pretty sizable difference here yeah i mean when it crits though so that was roughly like low two thousands right because that's that's non crit and with crit we were hitting like we were hitting like low 2000s. All right, but now, 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 let, let me let me switch this up for you. All right, now, if you want to be a real degenerate, you end up going with a physical build. All right, so what we've got here is <laughs> two-piece glad. Oh, I messed this up. I totally messed this up. What you go with is a two-piece glad, two-piece bloodstain. You end up going with your crescent pike, uh-huh, uh-huh, and you go with a physical damage goblet. Just, just because, like, who are you? You're, you're freaking Zhao. You do what you want, man. You do, you do what you want to do. As you can see, we still do decent damage there, but you can just do stupid physical damage, dude. You can just do stupid stuff. It's so good, and you can keep things, like, just completely staggered with your charge attacks. Dude, it's, it's too good. It's too good. This guy just melts, man. I like it. I really enjoy it. Yeah, all right, it's a Fatui agent. They have, you know, a, a physical resistance of like negative 20 or something, I don't know. They have a pretty, they, they take increased damage from physical stuff. So it's not a, like a, it is a little bit skewed in the results, but for one of those people, I, I will admit, I am one of those people that just, 
I just for whatever reason am so hyper focused on doing my normal attack damage that I will forget to use my bursts and skills and they will sit there on cooldown and I just forget. All right, I am just that guy. So for me, this actually may end up working out better for me because it just, it just works. I mean, 6,000 damage at level 60? That's not bad, man. That's really not bad. I mean, I think that's something we may need to explore a little bit more. A physical version of, uh, of Zhao could actually be pretty good, man. But anyways, guys, there's still a lot to be learned. There's still a lot of math and a lot of stuff that could be done. If you guys have like a specific thing that you are enjoying about Zhao, let me know down in the comments below. If you are building physical damage, I'd love to know. If you're building straight animo based damage, I'd love to know. If you're just rocking the, the primordial jade wing spear and you're just letting that schlong hang out on the freaking table like that, man. Let me know. Like I said, guys, if you are at this point in the video and you haven't clicked away, you probably do actually care a little bit. If you do care a little bit, hitting that subscribe button would be the best thing in the world that you could do for me because I am really trying to hit 50K before my birthday. It is at the beginning of April. I don't know if I want to reveal it my exact birthday, but anyways, thank you guys so much. Hopefully you guys have fun playing with Shout. If you got him, if you didn't and you are holding out, just let me tell you. His playstyle is super chaotic, it's super fast, it's super fun in that regard. If that seems like your thing, I say go for him. If it doesn't seem like your thing, wait, because Hu Tao is right around the corner and she is going to be super fun as well. Skip ka -ching. that's all I'm saying. See ya, boys! Major shout out to Cherry Blue, who is a YouTube member.